So today's lesson is on roots and zeros. We're going to be expanding upon the remainder and factor theorem that we learned uh, the previous day. So here, if x minus c is a factor of f of x, that tells us we have an x-intercept of c0. And we kind of already, have, already know this because we've graphed the functions, and we know that if we have a remainder of 0, so if this works out, that it is an x-intercept. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to be solving, and we're going to state the number and types of roots. And so these first ones are really easy. So x plus 3 equals 0. So we should be able to subtract 3 from both sides and say x equals negative 3. This has one real root. We say it's one real root because negative 3 is a real number. Uh, x squared minus 8x plus 16. You can do the quadratic formula. You can complete the square or you can just factor this. And we see that this would factor to x minus 4 times x minus 4 equals 0. So solving both of those, so if x minus 4 equals 0, add 4 to both sides, so x equals 4. We're going to get the same answer for over here, x equals 4. So here, notice we got two answers. They both are x equals 4, so 4 is our answer, but we actually have two real roots. And we have two real roots because we got two answers here, they just both happen to be the same number. Okay. Next one, x to the third plus 2x equals 0. So first we should take a GCF of an x out, so we're left with x squared plus 2. Uh, now we can make these both equal to 0, so x equals 0 and x squared plus 2 equals 0. x equals 0, that's uh, one of our answers. We'll have to solve this next one, so we can subtract 2 from both sides. So x squared is equal to negative 2. Take the square root. So x is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 2. So here, the x equals 0, it, that would be one real root. And then this plus or minus i, that would be two imaginary or complex roots. All right, and the very last one here, x to the fourth minus 1 is equal to 0. This is a difference of squares, so we certainly could factor it to x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1 equals 0. And then we could solve both of those. So x squared minus 1 equals 0, x squared plus 1 equals 0. So if x squared minus 1 equals 0, x squared would equal 1, square root of both sides, so x would equal both plus and minus 1. Here, x squared plus 1 equals 0, subtract 1, so x squared equals negative 1. Square root of both sides, so x would equal both plus and, and negative i. So here would be our solutions. Here we have two real roots and two imaginary. Now something I want you to take note of, which is pretty important, is here we have one real root and our degree of the function was 1. Here we have two real roots, our degree of the function is 2. Here we have a total of three roots, and our degree of the function was 3. Here we have a total of four roots, and our degree of the function is 4. That holds true every single time. So whatever the degree of the function is, that is how many total solutions, solutions you should end up having. So now, to help us find these solutions, we're going to use Descartes' rule of signs because sometimes we're going to have functions, like this one down here, that we can't clearly factor to solve. So here's what Descartes' rule of signs tells us. First of all, we have p of x is a polynomial. We have all real coefficients, and the terms have to be arranged in descending powers. So we'll start at the highest power and go to the lowest. So the number of positive real zeros is the same as the sign changes the coefficients or less than it by an even number. So for example, here for this problem, we go from a positive number to a negative number, so that's a sign change. A negative number to a negative number, so that's not a sign change. A negative to a positive, so that is a sign change. Positive to a negative, that is a sign change negative to a positive, that is a sign change. So we had one, two, three, four sign changes. So what that tells us is that we could have four 
or it could be less than it by an even number, so we could be 2, or 0 positive solutions. Okay, that's what this first part is telling us. So we just have to count the number of sign changes. The second part is dealing with the number of negative real zeros. It's the same as the number of sign changes of p of negative x or less than it by an even number. So we need to figure out what p of negative x would be. Well, think about when we plug a negative value in for these. Um, if you have a negative number to an odd power, you're going to get a negative number back. If you have a negative number to an even power, you are always going to get a positive number back. So what this is telling us is that for every odd exponent, the sign is going to be different. So if this started off as a positive x to the fifth, this would end up being a negative x to the fifth. This is an even, so this would actually end up staying the same, so that would stay as a negative. This is an odd exponent, so it started negative, it's going to switch to a positive. Even sign, so it stays the same. Odd, so it's going to switch this one to a positive, and this one's also here a positive. Now we just can look at these signs and just count the sign changes. We really don't care that about these uh, variables or the values. We just really care about what the signs are here. So now looking, notice negative to a negative, it stays the same. Right here, though, this is one sign change. And then it stays, stays, stays. So we only had one sign change. If we try subtracting 2, that's our even number from 1, we get a negative value, which doesn't work. So we can have one negative solution. And now we also are going to be able to state how many possible imaginary there can be. So what we were just discussing was that there had to be a total of your highest degree. So our highest degree here is 5, so there should be a total of five solutions. So between your positive, your negative, and imaginary, they have to add up to five. So I'm going to make a little chart here. The positive we could have four, two, or zero. The negative we could only have one, and the total should be five. So if we have four positive and one negative, that means we can't have any imaginary, because four plus one is already five. If we have two positive and one negative, that's only three, so our other two answers have to be imaginary. If we have zero positive and one negative, that's only one, so our other four answers have to be imaginary. Notice that each row here, if you were to add those three numbers up, they add to five every time. So this tells us for imaginary, we could also have four, two, or zero imaginary. This process right here is going to become critical to us uh, for us to be able to solve polynomials that look like this one. And that's exactly what we're going to do for this example, is we're going to find all the zeros for the function. So we are going to take the function and we're going to figure out what the zeros are and we're going to use Descartes' law of signs to help us. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at this and we want to determine the sign changes. So we go, okay, it's a positive number to a negative number, that's a sign change. Negative to a positive, that's a sign change. Positive to a negative, that's a sign change. So one, two, three. So we have three or, by, or less than this by an even number. So three minus two is one. So we can have three or one positive solutions. Now we want to look at the negative ones. So that would be f of negative x. So we just have to switch the odd exponent signs. So x to the third would become negative. x squared would say negative. x would become negative, and then the negative 4. Looking here, there are no sign changes. They stayed negative the whole time. So there are zero negative ones. So now this will help us find the zeros because we now know what types of numbers to try. Um, we can't just factor this function, okay? It's not factorable for how we know how to do it. So we're going to use synthetic division to try to find the zeros. 
We know that we aren't going to have any negative solutions, so we're not going to try negative numbers. We know we have at least one positive, so we're going to try positive numbers. So we're going to set up synthetic division. So 1, negative 4, 6, negative 4. Now, we also have a few other things that we know to help us. We're going to look at whatever our last value is here, this negative 4. Factors of negative 4 are 1, 2, and 4. So those are going to be the three values that we're going to try. We're going to try positive 1, positive 2, and positive 4. And remember positive because we know we have at least one positive solution. So here we're going to try positive 1 first, and we're hoping to find a 0 in the remainder. So we drop the 1 down. 1 times 1 is 1, plus negative 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3, plus negative 4 is negative 1. That one did not work. So now we'll go on and we'll try the next one. We know 1 doesn't work, so we will go ahead and try 2. So we drop down our 1. 1 times 2 is 2, plus negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 6 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus negative 4 is 0. We found 1. Here we have a remainder of 0, so that means it's a 0 of the function and it works. So one of our solutions over here is 2. Now to find the remaining 2, we're going to write out the depressed polynomial. So this starts off as x squared minus 2x plus 2. You should look at it and see if you can factor it. After looking at this, it's clear that it can't be factored quickly. So we're going to use the quadratic formula, or completing the square. I'll do the quadratic formula here, which, if you recall, is negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b, so positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4ac, so 4 times 1 times 2 is 8, all over 2a, so 2. And so this would be 2 plus or minus, well 4 minus 8, that's negative 4, so the square root of negative 4 would be 2i, all over 2, and then 2, 2, and 2 we can reduce down by dividing by 2, so 1 plus or minus i. So that would be your other solutions here, it would be 1 plus or minus i. So this, we should have a total of three answers, and we have one, two, three answers. So there we found all the zeros for the function.